المستقيم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب. Now we've been talking about the occultation, the ghaybah of Imam al-Mahdi ta'ala fadajwa al-Sharif and how it is a test of taslim and also a punishment from Allah ta'ala. We talked about that in the previous nights. Now something which is very important also for us to, for us Shias to consider a concept is that does the name of Imam Mahdi mention the Quran? You know we say that living in Imam Mahdi would make you a believer, a mu'min. If not, if you don't believe in the Imams, especially Imam Mahdi, you're not a believer, you're not a mu'min. Such an important concept is mentioned in the Quran or not? Is the name of Imam Mahdi found in the Quran? And before that, you know that the name of our Imam is not Mahdi. His name is the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But Ahlul Bayt forbid us to mention the name of our Imam. And that was out of Taqiyya to protect the Imam. And they said, do not call him by his name. You know, we refer to him as Mahdi and Taqiyyatullah and Abu Saleh and these names. Now, is his name found in Quran or not? Before we get into this, this, this is a big question that we have, Shias have to answer. And that we always get this question from the non-Shias, the Sunnis, that you, know, you believe in the Imams, you believe that you know, one of the pillars of Islam is Imam, right? If it's a, such a big, important concept, shouldn't Allah talk about it in the Quran? Shouldn't Allah come and explicitly say that, you know, these are the Imams that I want you to believe, Ali, wal Hassan, wal Hussain, wa Ali, huh? Does it, Allah have to do that? So this is a bit, very important question that we get from the non-Shi'as and we have to be able to answer this question. Because obviously Quran, it says that وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنِ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah says that we have sent this book to you as a clarification, tibyan, clarification, explanation of everything. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ and it's a guidance, mercy, and good news for the, for the Muslims. So it's a tibyan condition. You know, when Allah talked about the alwah, the tablets that He gave to Musa, He said, uh, uh, Allah said, min kulli shay. Min kulli shay. Min kulli shay, they say that this word men is, they call it tab'idiyya, portion. Min kulli shay means that Allah gave uh, as something from every uh, 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 case or affair to the, to the Prophet Musa in the tablets. But when it comes to Quran, Allah says, I have explained everything in Quran. Right? I have explained everything in Quran. So if that's the case, so shouldn't we see the names of Ahlul Bayt in Quran? Well, yes, the Quran is tabyanan likul shay. And it is true, but this Quran says that all these clarifications and explanations are, are explicitly in the apparent meaning, Zahir al Quran. Right? Because Quran has inner meanings. Someone came to Imam Jabir ibn Yazid al Jafi. He came to Imam al Salam. He said that I came to him one day and asked him about tafsir and ayah. Imam gave me an answer. The next day I came. I asked about the same ayah, tafsir of the same ayah, the Imam gave me another answer. I said, Imam, how come? <laughs> the, you know, the day before he gave me a different answer, and now he gave me another tafsir. Imam said, Ya Jabir, inna lil Qur'ani batnan wa lil batni batnun wa lahu ghahrun wa lil dhahri dhahrun. Jabir, Qur'an has batna. Bat means inner meanings. Inner meanings. You read one ayah, what we understand is just the apparent meanings. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ Allah, say Allah is one. It has batr, it has inner meanings, many, many meanings within that, that we cannot see or nor understand. Batn of Qur'an. Yes, Qur'an has explanation of everything, but not in the its apparent meaning. Imam Salih alayhi salam said, إِنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ خَبَرَ السَّمَاءِ وَخَبَرَ الْأَرْضِ I know everything in the heavens and the earth. Everything 
that have in the past, present, every single thing that, have, that will happen until the day of judgment. Everything, yes. Does the mom know, knew that, you know, you know Trump will be selected, uh, uh, you know, selected? Yes, he knew that. Did he know about America? Yes, he knew that. The narrative said, how come you know this? But Imam said, Quran said, Tibyanan likulli shay. And I know everything from Quran. Well, we don't see those information about physics, chemistry, politics, economy. We don't see any of that in Quran. Can you show it to me? No. Even when it comes to the religious affairs, how many rak'ah should we pray for the morning? Two or four. Can you tell me from Quran? You know, those Quranis who emphasize on only Quran, only Quran. You might have seen them. You know, tell them, you know, we pray two rak'ah. Why? Tell us from Quran where it says that we have to pray two rak'ah in the morning. Four rak'ah Allah. Right? So yes, it has tabiyan of the kurdishayn. And the ayah itself, it has a hint. It says, when I said now, alayka, we have sent down this book to you. So it's a clarification of everything, but to you, not to everyone. Right? وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ How about for the Muslimin, for the Muslims? For us, Huda. This book is not a clarification for us, for everything. It's Huda. It's a book of guidance, mercy, and Bushra, good news. Is it Tabyan for us? No. It's just like a book that we have, for example, about physics. And someone tells a physics teacher says that this book has a lot of good information about physics. You study this, you know everything about physics. Great. You go and read that book, you understand nothing. You say, come on, I didn't get anything from physics. So, well, yes, the, the teacher can, if, he, if the teacher, if someone's professional, reads that book, he would get everything about physics from that book. Not you. So, what if Yana and the and also if all these details were, all, you know, with Quran's explanation of everything, if they were all in the apparent meaning, Quran would not be one volume, it would be millions of volumes, right? Because Kundashay, everything is almost unlimited, right? Countless. If Quran wanted to explicitly say and talk about everything, apparently, it would be millions and millions and millions of volumes, right? Well, when you talk, when you tell the non Shias about this, they say, well, fine, we, ex we agree to that. But when it comes to, Quran doesn't talk about everything explicitly in its apparent meaning, fine. But when it comes to something very important, like Imam that you guys, you Shias claim, and Imam Mahdi that you claim is, you know, Milak al Iman, Asas al Iman, is the foundation of faith. Well, it has to be mentioned. Something as such important, and something that is more important has to be. Even mention more, not that. Well, that has a lot of answers. One answer is that it's a bad deal, it's a bad question, but let me ask that question. Are the 124,000 prophets more important or mosquito? It's a bad question, I know it's a bad comparison. Obviously, 124,000 prophets, the best creatures of Allah, we admire them, respect them. How many of those 124,000 prophets Allah named in Quran? Very few, very, very few. But Allah mentions Ba'udha, mosquito. Nah, bees, bees. Ibn, camels, right? Allah mentions these animals and not many prophets. So we don't have this general principle that something which is very important has to be mentioned more or more explicitly. Allah does what He does in Quran. You know, we cannot question why Allah mentioned. Another example is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Better or Prophet Musa? Well, obviously, our Prophet is Af Ashraf al Makhluqat, the best creature of Allah. How many times Allah mentions the name of the Holy Prophet? Four times. How many times Allah mentions the name of Prophet Musa? 134 times. <laughs> or another time, you know, some people come and say that, oh, Shaykh, if khums is something that we must really pay and Allah, you know, want us to pay, so why is it only mentioned once in the Quran? <coughs> you know, we cannot, you know, say what, what is more important or less important based on how many times 
it's mentioned or how it's mentioned in Quran, right? Yes, Quran is tabiyan li kulli shaykh, clarification of everything. But Allah is the one who decides how He wants to talk about these facts, whether in the zahir, in apparent meaning, or in the inner meanings, or the batn of Quran. And also they might say that, you know, well, if Allah had mentioned the name of the Imam, Imam Mahdi, for example, in the Quran explicitly, then we wouldn't have any dispute anymore. You know, there would be the end of discussion. Here you go, Imam Allah says, this, there are 12 Imams, last one is Mahdi, follow him, believe in him, fine, end of discussion. No, sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't be the end of discussion. The same way that when Allah mentioned the name of our Holy Prophet four times in the Quran, it was not the end of the discussion. We had Munafiqeen that time, and we have Munafiqeen, the hypocrites, until today. Allah mentioned the name of Prophet explicitly. The name, Meem, Ha, Meem, Da, Muhammad in Quran, four times. And still people did not clearly believe in him. So, basically, what Quran says in these affairs is that, لا يسأل عما يفعل Meaning that, you humans, just do your own thing and leave what I do to myself. Quran says, لا يسأل عما يفعل Do not undermine, do not question that why and how Allah acts. Why does Allah talk in this way or not that way? We don't know. We don't know wisdom behind it. We might guess, but we don't know the wisdom behind it. And we have another hadith that someone asked about why the name of Imam Ali alayhi salam is not mentioned in Quran. And Imam said that if, they, if that was mentioned, they would have tried their best to uh, 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 erase that name from Quran. And many answers. There's a great book. لماذا لم يصرح باسم الإمام علي عليه السلام طبعا أنا مرحبا بقريس scholars you can read that books in Arabic now so we can we should not be necessarily looking for the name of our 12 Imam in Quran but definitely we must be able to point out to ayahs of Quran when Allah ta'ala talks about our Imam because he is the savior he is the one that we believe that not only in Islam, but the previous imam, previous nations, in Torah, in Zabur, in the book of the Christians, it was all mentioned about him. It all talk, they all talked about the last savior. So is it possible that Allah neglected about the Mahdi in Quran? No. Definitely, Allah Taala talked about our beloved imam in Quran. And we're going to talk about these ayahs. And we as Shias must be able to prove the existence of our Imam from Quran. You know, if I believe that I have a master, an Imam, a leader, who I turn to, who I, who I believe that is, you know, the, the, the success of Allah Ta'ala on this earth, I should be able to prove his existence. Yes, I cannot see him, but I should be able to prove him, especially from Quran. So inshallah, in these nights, we'll you know, try to talk about these verses of Qur'an. And the first ayah we're going to talk about is uh, the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah Ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This book is huda, guidance for muttaqeen, those who are pious, God-fearing. هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Who are the muttaqeen? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ those who believe in ghayb, the unseen. Now, according to our hadith, you might, you know, you know, you might, you might come to your mind that okay, ghayb means Allah wa Taala, such and such. No, according to our narrations, al-ladina yu'minuna bil ghayb. Ghayb refers to no one but Imam al-Mahdi Allah Taala Allah. 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 Before getting into the narrations, let us examine the ayah itself. You see, Allah starts talking about talk, talking about the muttaqin. ذلك الكتاب This book, Quran. Hudan lil muttaqin. It's a guidance for muttaqin. Now, Allah wants to describe the muttaqin. Who are the muttaqin? Right? Let's say you have a brother, a, a friend. You know, I come to you and say, Who is this friend of you? You don't give me a minor 
thing about him. You give me something that he's known for. A very important factor or element of that friend of yours, right? Now Allah Taala wants to describe to us the muttaqin, the pious people, the God-fearing people. Obviously Allah Taala would give us the most important factor that they have, right? Not something minor. What is that most important thing about them? Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْرِ If you want to recognize who is a mu'min and who is not a mu'min, look at whether he believes in ghayb or not. If he believes in ghayb, he is a muttaqi. He is a pious person. If he doesn't believe in ghayb, he is not a muttaqi. He is not a pious person. So the milaj, the condition, for a person to be a pious, to be pious or not, is living in the unseen or ghayb. Al-ladina yu'minuna bil ghayb. And this is the most important difference between the mu'mineen and the kuffar. Living in the ghayb. The believers believe in the ghayb, the unseen. The kuffar do not believe in that. And Allah talks about that in many verses. The kuffar want to see everything sensible. Tangible. They want to sense things. They said they say that whatever we see and feel and experience, that exists. If not, then it doesn't exist. Quran says, "We ask the Ahlul Kitab and to nazar alayhim kitab min al sama." Those who do not believe in you, they come to you and say, "If you're really a prophet, send us a book from the heaven." You want to see your Quran? You know, being sent down from the heaven and come down all the way down to you, you can get away your hands. You want to see that physically. Quran says that the kuffar want to sense everything, want everything to be tangible. فَقَدْ سَأَلُوا مُوسَىٰ أَكْبَرْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Quran says, Allah says in the Quran that do not worry because they ask Musa something more uh, uh, and greater than that. فَقَالُوا أَلَيْنَ اللَّهِ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّاعَةَ بِالْكُرْمِ Allah says in the Quran that they, great, they asked Allah something greater. They asked brought Musa something greater. What did they ask Musa? They come to Musa, came to Musa and said that we want to see Allah you know, with our own eyes. Right? They want to sense it, tangible, experience things, feel things. They want to see the book of Allah coming down. They want to see Allah Taala Himself. Right? In another ayah, Allah reveals the, the reality about these people. Allah says in Quran that even if that they say that you know if we see things tangible, we would believe, they're lying to you. It's not true. Quran says that Allah says, even if we had sent the angels, they could see the angels coming from the heavens down. If they could see the dead people talking to them. Even if they could sense things and feel things and experience things, still they would not believe in Allah. So basically Allah is saying that this is just an excuse that they're bringing. And in reality, even if they sense, sense and things and experience things, they will not believe in it. Now, the, the question is that, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْنِ Right? We must believe in the unseen. Why? Why should we believe in the unseen? Well, just because Quran says so, that unseen exists, we cannot see it. We cannot feel Imam Mahdi. Have you felt Imam Mahdi? Have you seen Imam Mahdi? Have you sensed him? No. Well, why should I believe in him if I don't see him? Ghaib means something that is unseen. If he is unseen, why should, I, why should I believe in him? And that is a very important question. Because not only Shia Islam, but all the religions, they claim that they have something ghaib, unseen, that they want you to believe in them. Right? When you go to Christianity, Judaism, Buddhists, or the Hindus, doesn't matter which religion they go to, you go to, they all say, oh, there's something ghaib, unseen, that you must believe in that, right? Well, 
Islam says the same thing, that you must believe in something that is ghayb. What's the difference between us and them? Why should I not believe in their ghayb, in their unseen? And believe in our ghayb, and our thing that we call it unseen, which is referring to Imam Mahdi Why? And that is a very important question that, must be, that we must bring up and ask ourselves. Because a lot of us, you know, the fact is, we Shias, Dude, why do you believe in Imam Mahdi? Well, my parents say so. I know, I was born in a Shia family. I was born in a Pakistani family, Arabic family, Indian family, Iranian family, so... Why? We must be able to bring logical, dalil, intellectual reasoning, why Imam Mahdi exists. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ when Allah says that believers are those who believe in the unseen, they don't just believe in the unseen because Allah says so, because the Quran says so, because their parents say so. No, they have the lead intellectual reasoning to prove that He exists. Otherwise, they should not believe in it. You know, Islam and Shia Islam is not like Christianity where they tell you something you have to believe even if it doesn't make sense. Right? They tell you three is one, and one is. Doesn't make sense to me. Oh, my pastor. They want you to believe in it. Right? That's why in America, a lot of people in the West, they believe that you either have faith or you're a scientist. You believe in the science or religion. You cannot be a religious person living in science. Why? Because Christianity, what does Christianity tell people? That if you are... Christian, you believe in what we say. You come to the church, whatever the pastor says is the word of God. And you accept that without any question. Come on, I shouldn't have any dalil, any reasoning for it. No, this is what it says. This is what it is. That is not what Shia says. When Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ You need to have dalil for the ghayb. For that unseen thing. I remember one day at in Virginia, we are, we are living in Virginia, and two uh, preachers, Christian preachers, you know, the Mormons, they came and knocked on the door, and they had a Bible in their hand, and they say that, you know, one, want to invite you to Christianity. I said, fine, can you bring me a dalil, reason why I should be a Christian and believe in your Jesus? And they said, no. I said, what do you mean, no? So how should I believe in, in what you say? They say, well, you first have to believe in Jesus. Once you believe in Jesus, you will feel the spirit of Jesus within you. And then you'll see the truth of Jesus. I said, well, fine. Can you tell me something before accepting your Jesus? They have nothing. And that is the problem. That If you see a lot of people living their religion in this country, in the West, that is why. Because they're, act, they're acting people, are asking people, these religious you know, groups, Christians, different sects of them. They want people to believe in whatever they say without any logic. This is not what Shia Islam says. And this is what we can be really proud of. That Shia Islam is based on aql and intellect. Imam Ali Salam said, Ma abid bihi rahman ibad bihi jalan. Aqh is something that you can, that you can uh, reach the heaven with and you worship Allah with. There's a hadith from our master, Imam Amir al-Mu'min sallallahu wa sallamu Jabra'il came to Prophet Adam ala nabiyya wa salam and said that I have brought you three things. And you have a choice to choose one of them. What are those three? Al-Aql, Wal-Haya, Wal-Deen. I brought you intellect, Haya, modesty, and Deen, religion. Which one of these three would you accept? You have to only choose one. It's a hard question. Huh? Which one do you choose? Prophet Adam thought about it and said that I choose Al-Aql, intellect. Amongst aql, modesty, and religion. I choose aql, intellect. 
Jibreel turned to Haya and Deen, modesty and religion, and told them, you turn away and go away. He chose Aql, he chose intellect. The Hadith say that Haya and Deen, the modesty and religion, they turned to Jibreel and say that we are ordered by Allah Taala to be wherever the Aql exists. We cannot go anywhere. He chose aql, intellect, wherever there is aql, intellect, there will be haya and deen and religion. So aql has a great role in our religion. We are not like, as I say, the Christians who uh, 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 put the faith in front of science and logic. No, that's not the case in our religion. And we ran out of time, inshallah, we'll talk more about this tomorrow night. But so when Allah Taala says, Alladina Yu'minuna Bil Ghaib, Allah is not asking us to put our mind aside and just believe whatever it says. Just because our parents said Mom Mahdi exists, believe in it. No. Alladina Yu'minuna Bil Ghaib are those who intellectually choose to believe in the Ghaib, who have logical reasoning why that Ghaib exists. And Quran has a lot of intellectual reasons. A lot of intellectual reasons. And our prophets invited people to their message with intellectual reasons. You know, for example, many examples of Quran. One example is Prophet Ibrahim. When the people of his town went out, went out of town, the people that he was living in, they went out of town. Right? Quran says that he brought them all. He went and broke all the idols, right? When they came back, they got very angry and said, Who broke these idols? They said, Oh, there's a guy, his name is Ibrahim. He did this, right? They brought Ibrahim. Are you the one who you know, destroyed our idols? And he destroyed all of them, illa kabira, except the biggest idol that existed. Ibrahim said that, well actually, you know, the biggest idol, he was the one who killed and destroyed all these other idols. They started thinking to themselves, because look, here, what is Ibrahim doing? Is bringing an intellectual reasoning. Dalil, Sohra, Kobra, right? And Natija. He is bringing intellectual reasoning that the idol that cannot benefit itself, that cannot protect itself, how can it protect me and my family and my life and create me? He is bringing Dalil, Akli, intellectual reasoning. He is not telling people, I am Ibrahim, selected by Allah, and I tell you that Allah exists and you have to live in it without any question. No. And Ibrahim said that you believe in the idols who do not benefit you or do not cannot harm you. Or where Allah Ta'ala talks about why we should not have two gods in this world. Allah said Allah Another important intellectual reasoning why there should not be two gods. Allah says if there was another god besides Allah, la fasadata, the whole universe would have been in corruption and it would collapse. Why? Because if you imagine two powerful gods next to each other, well obviously one god wanted to be day not the daytime, the other god wanted to be night. One god wants to create humans, the other god wants to destroy them. Corruption, right? This is not Allah is not saying I'm in Allah, your Lord, and I'm telling you I'm the only one you gotta accept this without any question. No, Allah brings intellectual reasoning. Alladina, you aminun bil ghai. If you are a muttaqi, your sign is to believe in Imam Mahdi as Ghai, the unseen, and you must have a dalil. If you don't have a dalil, if you don't have a reasoning to believe in the, in the ghaib, in the unseen, which is Muhammad, you can believe in anything. Anything.
anything. I come to you and say, oh, there is a universe beside this, this world. There's this, there's that. You know, the Buddha is your God. I can tell you anything and you would believe in it. If you are, if you are to believe in anything as unseen, right, without the need, you can believe in anything. But we must be in the guy with the Dalil, inshallah. Now, what's the Dalil? Inshallah, if we're alive, uh, I will talk about it in the uh, upcoming mass, inshallah. We ask Allah Ta'ala ta to give us the ma'rafah of our Imam and to hasten the affairs of our beloved Imam al Mahdi, Ajjah, Rabbi Ajjah, Sharif. Allahumma Ajjah, the Waliyah, Shal Faraj. Allahumma Ajjah, the Waliyah, Shal Faraj. اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من خير الصار والشيعة والصبح والمستشهدين بين يدي بركة الصلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد